Some of the biggest content creators love to use these effects because you probably have seen this effect in a ton of places and you wanted to replicate it. And well, to be honest, this effect is a really great way to present any other element on your video and to keep it engaging in that way. But creating it does take time and effort. I've taken the time to figure out how to make it work in DaVinci, but there's one important part of this effect that you will have to do it on your own and I'm going to show you that process too. Also, at the end of the video, I will share a little alternative that you might be able to use in the near future to create effects like these in a matter of seconds. But first things first, the first thing that you will need is, well, a piece of paper. And this could be a white sheet of paper or this could be magazine papers or it could be newspaper, any type of paper that you want. All of them work. Now, the next step is really important because you will need to set up your phone or your camera on a fixed position pointing down. That way we can take the pictures of the paper that will create our fold. Now, in this case, what I used was this phone tripod and you can see these pretty rough build that I made here and I use this table. Now, one extra little thing is that if you have a green screen or like a blue cloth that you can use as a blue screen, you can set this up to be under your sheet of paper. That way, later on in post, we can remove that more easily and be a lot more efficient. Okay, now start by taking one picture of your paper without any folds or anything, just a like clean picture of your sheet of paper. Now try to not move it too much, but this is not a big deal because we can always fix it later if it moves a little bit. After you have your first picture, which will be basically the end result, we're basically starting at the end position and then going backwards. Now fold each of the corners of the piece of your paper and it doesn't have to be perfect, but just do these and take a picture and then keep going as many times as you want until you are not able to fold your paper anymore. Now you can do this without any plans, but it can also work great if you plan out to be like, let's say you wanted to have six pictures. So that way you can calculate how many folds or how big the paper folds are going to be when you are building each fold or each paper fold. Okay, now let's take these into DaVinci and work on the next part. Okay, let's leave this out right there. I don't know why I had a hat on. Okay, so we are here in DaVinci Resolve and the first thing that we are gonna do is bring our images into our timeline so that we can create a pre-comp of the paper fold. And here is where you can decide how many frames you would want to have between each of the images, right? So in my case, what I did was I used three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and then I'm going to bring that other image. Then I'm going to do one, two, three, and then I'm going to bring that other image again and so on, right? So it doesn't have to be three. It can be four. It can be five. It all depends on how many images you have chosen to take. Now you can leave this last one, which will be the one covering the whole screen a little bit longer. That way you can keep these sort of like as a texture on the actual element that you're using, right? The next thing that we want to do is we want to basically align our papers. So I'm going to rotate all of these 90 degrees and I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. And then you can adjust each of them so that it's a little bit bigger maybe. And that way, it com the last one that we have fills the screen completely. That's what I did on the example that you had all seen and that you had liked it. I think it was probably the most popular community post of the channel. And community posts are not really seen by anybody, I think. Like, I don't know how it actually ends up working because it doesn't seem that anybody actually sees it. Okay, and then on the last image, we want to cover the whole screen. Like that. Let's take a look. We have that animation. If I press play, then we have that pretty cool already. Now, this next step is something that I did, which was, which is optional. You can already do this and bring this into Fusion if you have used a green screen or a blue screen that's a lot less wrinkled like the one I did. So what you want to do if you have studio is use the magic mask to separate the sheet of paper here. That way you can basically have a really clean and accurate paper fold without any background. Okay, so I'm going to pre-comb these 
or create a compound clip. I'm gonna name this paper, paper fold. Let's call this two. Then I'm gonna use a color page for this, but you can also do it in Fusion. I will bring this up right here because we're gonna add a generator in a little bit because later you wanna render this as a video. That way you can use these on your projects later on and it's a little bit more easy to do so if you have a video of these instead of having to use these compound clip and all that so i'm going to go to the color page and i'm going to use the magic mask in because i'm in studio if you don't have the magic mask and you don't have a way to get rid of this background you can use photoshop or your favorite image manipulation software to get rid of that background and mask this out like that. So with the magic mask, what you want to do is select the paper. I'm going to right click and add alpha output right here. And now we have that clean looking sheet of paper. Now we can press play and see if there's any parts that have been missing in our animation. Sometimes that happens. So you have to go and create another line and then retract these. But it's not a big deal. So let's take a look at these. It looks pretty good and it doesn't seem that we're going to have to make any other adjustments to it. Okay, we have that here. And if you follow this method, what you want to do is go to the effects section and add a solid color. And we're going to add this as a green screen. So any type of green can work like that. That way we're going to use an ultra here in Fusion later to remove this. Here you want to pre-comp these again and then call these whatever you want. So I'm going to call these green and the magic mask disappears because for some reason. So I'm going to open this in timeline and I'm going to have to go to the color page again and I'm going to have to retract this magic mask. Maybe I don't have a cache option activated for the magic mask, but I'm not sure why that happens to me. Let me know if something like that happens to you also. That way we can figure out how to solve that, right? Okay. Here, what you have is a perfect paper fold animation that you can already start using. There's a little bit of a bluish thing there. And for the tutorial sake, I'm not going to go and adjust each detail of this. But what we're going to do is just render these as an MP4. That way we have this video that we can use. Okay, after we have our paper fold, what we can do is bring whatever element you want to use into your timeline. As you can see here in this example, we have this Suave logo right here. So I'm going to go and bring this DaVinci Resolve logo. And then we're going to right click and open this in Fusion. Here we are in Fusion and we can see our logo right here. Let's add a background and we're going to connect these to our background right here. And press Ctrl T so this background is the main background of our composition. We're going to bring this into Alpha Channel. And we're going to go to image, deactivate auto resolution and set this up to be the same as your timeline. So 1920 by 1080. And then we're going to add our video, which is this one right here. The formatting of these changed these to 1024 by 1024. I'm not sure why, but I'm going to add an ultra here and press two. And now we can remove this green background right there. I think we can also add a resize right here if that happens to you. And then on this resize, set this to 1920 by 1080, and then you should be fine. And let's take a look at these. Now, remember I mentioned that little green thing here. So if you happen to have that same issue, just add a simple transform node and make these a little bit bigger like that. And it will cover the whole screen without any issues. Okay. Now that we have the ultra here, what we need to do is create a couple of merge nodes. So I'm going to bring this merge node right here and I'm going to bring another merge node right here. We're going to connect this one to this merge node, but this one is going to be coming as a foreground. We're going to connect this ultra here to this merge node and then we can actually get rid of this one right here and connect these to this merge node. We can add a transform node to this one so that we can later on adjust the size of our logo right here if we want. And then we're going to connect this merge node to these and then connect this merge node right here as a foreground. And it's a little bit complicated, but don't worry, it will make sense in a little bit. So we're going to go to this merge node number three right here, and we have to make sure that this one is set to apply mask inverted. 
because we are going to press 2 right here and we have to create a mask around our paper that we have right here so for that you're going to have to go to that first frame until you see the section of the paper that needs a mask probably right here already and then we're going to have to add a polygon to this we're going to add a polygon to this one and we're also going to add a polygon to this merge node right here we're not seeing anything right now because the mask is not active, right? So this part is also a little bit tedious because you have to mask these out, right? So we're going to start the mask actually at, I think on this image, it should be fine. So to do that, we're going to make sure to create a, an animation for the polygon right here. And then you want to basically just follow the path that's inside the paper that will be the place where our logo or whatever element that you use is going to be revealed. Now, if this happens, what I did was I actually just tried to follow along there and then came back later so that I could just go back to that other section. And that way we are only using one polygon instead of having to use multiple ones and then having to create and like deactivate them and all that stuff. Okay. There, we're going to bring these until we completely fill this mask right there. We can already see that logo behind, and that's how it's supposed to work. Now, after you have that first one, we, you want to go a couple frames forward until you go to the next image. And here, you're just going to have to drag these again until you cover that complete section of your paper. You can add more points right here, and that shouldn't be an issue with the other ones because if we go back it should it should still adapt properly right so don't be afraid of adding more paper more points later on but if you go back and add more points that can mess things up maybe so make sure that if you add new points you will do so on the new images or the new frames basically so don't forget to move all of these until you cover that whole scene and now we have that second one but it's important for you to know that you don't want these to completely animate in a linear way so make sure to open the spline tool if it's not open and you're going to select the points and then set this up to be step in that way whenever that new keyframe is or the new image shows up that new frame is going to appear and it's going to jump to that one instead of having to go through the motions of the actual points if of the mask moving around so then you want to repeat this process for all the images just that you have until you cover these completely, right? Now, one thing that happens is here, if we go back one frame, you're going to see that this mask is there and we don't want that to happen. So the easiest way to work around this is to create a size keyframe or a level keyframe right here. But if you create a size keyframe, and it's going to be better because then you can still see the paper fold. So go one frame before that first mask is supposed to show up. Create a size keyframe. Go one frame forward and then bring these back to default. Now we have that one there and the paper fold appears. and We don't have to worry about this. So I'm going to go through that process of creating all the masks again. And then we can check this out. All right, so after you have reached the last one, which is this other one that I have here, we're going to basically just bring all the other mask elements to the outside of our screen until the whole thing is covered. And you don't have to be extremely careful in this part because after that one, it doesn't really matter as much anymore, right? So I'm going to bring all of these outside, making sure that we are covering the whole screen with our mask. Now, as I, as I mentioned earlier, what you want to make sure to do is to select all of these and make sure you are stepping them in. That way, if we take a look at these, our logo is there already. Now, remember this merge node that we had applied the mask inverted to, which is this one. This looks fine as revealed, but it doesn't look quite great. What you can do is go to the merge section right here and then change the applying mode to multiply. That's basically gonna make it have sort of like more of the paper texture, right? 
and there you can adjust also the gain and all that stuff until you get to something that you like and if we take a look at these whoops i don't know i'm not sure why these black bars are showing up right here but yeah that's weird so it seems to be with the apply mode something with that it didn't happen in the other one so i'm not exactly sure with that, what happened so play around with that and see if that happens with you too maybe it was just some weird rendering issue right there all right it disappeared okay now that we have there there's one last thing that we can do which is using these media that we have here on this merge node so that our element is what limits the paper full animation and we don't have that full paper there that's covering the whole screen and this is an optional step if you want the whole paper to be covering the screen that's fine you can leave it like that but you can add this transform here that we had as a mask on this third merge node that way the paper full it's gonna only show up until the complete logo is revealed and if you make this bigger here that's why we had added the transform then it's gonna have a bigger area of effect and if you make these smaller then the transition is going to be a lot faster too right it's going to be revealed like that now before i mention the last part which is the little idea that i have gotten and that i shared with a bunch of you already is that the last step which i did not think before i was recording was that you want to add sound effects to these so you can go to pixabay or any other royalty free sound effects library and find it there or you can actually grab a piece of paper and use your microphone or a microphone and record folds by basically making a foley recording while looking at the animation that you have created right so that is an extra thing that you want to do so that the effect looks even better when you're using it now, what I wanted to mention was that I figured out a way to turn this into a effect that you can drag and drop into your elements, into things like that. But I want to build a plugin for these. So I am going to be leaving a form on the description of this video so that I can see how many people are interested in me making a plugin of this kind that way you can just use this effect and if let's say so if we get 100 people to sign up into that notification list or beta list you could call this i will make it my sole focus for this next week to create this plugin that way you have a bunch of animations that you can use on your projects with sound effects included and that they are all just drag and drop now the method for this to work or the framework for this to work requires a lot of like path making so it will be a little bit different and there's one little idea that i haven't tested that will make things a lot more easier too but i will keep you guys updated regarding that but in the meantime make sure you go and take your pictures of your papers and fold them make some origami maybe and then create your own collage paper fold animation that looks professional and awesome so make sure to follow all the steps in this video and come back to it if you forget any and that is how you can create a super cool paper fold animation that you can use on your videos and that concludes the 60 days challenge of 60 days and 60 different tutorials here in suave we'll see what comes next so make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you are kept in the loop with things and how things evolve from here. That is it for this video. See you next time here in Swati. Bye.